we're here to discuss the Chinese banking sector, especially in the midst of uh, several new policy initiatives announced by the government recently, and also the economic slowdown, ongoing economic slowdown in China. So I'm here with Chiang Liao. Thank you for being with us today, Chiang. Just wanted to get right to the first question. Let's talk about the recent interest rate cut and how is that going to affect Chinese banks? Uh, actually, this is the third time uh, of, for, for Chinese banks uh, to see the interest rate cut in less than six months. The cumulative uh, cut into the, uh, say, for one-year benchmark lending rate uh, was already 90 basis points. Clearly, there will be some uh, mixed bearing on the overall credit profile of Chinese banks. On the one hand, you can expect that the bank's net interest margin will be slashed because of this interest rate cut. Uh, we expect this could be uh, the, the slash or the contraction in the net interest margin this year could be as high as 20 basis points. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you can expect the corporate borrowers will benefit from this uh, interest rate cuts because the interest uh, payment burden will be elevated. So this will help support the uh, credit performance of the banks. Now, the government is implementing a debt for bond swap program to help local governments. Um, what's your view on this and how will this affect the banks? Right. Uh, local government finance platform debt uh, swap plan actually uh, is a big deal for the banking sector. You know, uh, this is really addressing a major risk overhang for Chinese banking sector given that this uh, ultimate borrowers, I mean the financing platforms, uh, are relatively weak in terms of the stand loan credit profiles. But uh, with this uh, swap, uh, now the banks are exposed to the provincial governments, which should have much higher credit standing. On the flip side, uh, you can expect the banks that interest margin may be negatively impact impacted by uh, the swap because the yield on the bonds uh, will be much lower than the loans to the financing platforms. Uh, but anyway, overall, we expect uh, this should be, we view this as a positive development for the Chinese banking sector. For my last question, I wanted to ask you about the property sector. You know, that's been a hot topic for a while. Um, how is that, you know, the sector affecting the situation with the banks in China? Right. Uh, the property sector is a hot topic for uh, quite a while. Uh, recently, we see uh, the transaction volumes in some tier one cities have stabilized, even improved. Uh, this uh, lent some uh, support to optimistic views about uh, the segment. Uh, our view is that from the banking perspective, uh, we believe uh, the fundamental uh, oversupply issue in tier three, tier four cities remain there. This will have will weigh on uh, the credit performance of this segment in the next uh, one or two years at least, and uh, it, it will uh, show up in the uh, uh, credit losses uh, for banks. So this probably would affect the, s the smaller banks rather than the larger banks in China? I think this would be a, a, a nationwide uh, issue, but uh, for smaller banks, they may be a bit more uh, exposed to this uh, risk because uh, smaller banks tend to have higher exposures, proportion -wise, uh, proportionally higher exposures to uh, property segment, and uh, uh, they also tend to lend to uh, developers which have weaker uh, credit standing than the major banks uh, do. So, so that's why uh, we believe smaller banks uh, may take a bigger hit from any uh, continued uh, downturn in property market. Great. Thank you, Chang. That's all we have time for. Thank you very much for your insights. Okay.